Uh, hey guys, this is my uh, Kerning and Trekker 2D rotary head mill. Uh, got it about five months ago. I've been working on it ever since. Uh, just wrapping up on things, uh, getting completed. Uh, just a few little details left. I still have to bolt on uh, the dab plates or the plates that show the feeds and speeds. Uh, that one there is for the rotary head um, for how many turns per minute. Uh, I think it's one fifth. Um, rotation a minute to 3 rpm um, and 14 other speeds in between. Um, this one here uh, I still have to bolt on as well. This is the x-axis and I think it'll go down to half inch per minute all the way up to 7 inches per minute which is a pretty nice speed range. I wish it would go a little bit faster but it'll work. Um, this machine here um, it's a a 1952 model um, the it it has a knee lift on it but this isn't a factory knee lift it's an aftermarket one which I'm, I'm glad it has it but uh, it sticks out a little further than the factory one um, instead of the lever lever right here to pull in and out on for up and down it just has a two buttons and up and a down um, also the downside to this one is there's no limit switches on it. I'm in the process of working on uh, putting some limit switches on it so it doesn't get run up too far or too, too far down. Um, this machine also has another rare option, seems to be rare from looking on the internet, is it has a factory air pump. Uh, this pump was, it worked all right when I first got it. Uh, it could have worked a little better so ended up boring it out a little bit and it's only a two vein vein pump so um, if you have clearance between the rotor and the outside housing it will just push the air in a circle and not pump any air at all so ended up having to put a sleeve in it I turned a cast iron sleeve and pressed it in um, and now if you uh, if you restrict the flow it'll make about 20 pounds of air which it's supposed to make they say it'll make up to 30 pounds in the in the manual I haven't been able to to get it to make that much but I think 20 pounds will be plenty. It also has a coolant pump. Um, that coolant pump was in really rough shape when I when I first started looking at it. I wasn't even planning on taking it apart. I was just gonna just kind of sandblast it off and paint it up with the rest of the machine and use it as a cover but uh, I started taking it apart and it actually was salvageable. Um, it's somewhat of an internal gear pump. Uh, I don't think it would pump water soluble oil very good. I don't think it would be thick enough, so uh, it, I think it's meant for pumping light cutting oil. And I pumped some 10 weight through it, and it pumped it great after we got it all fixed up. All we had to replace in it was a spring and a, and a check ball. Uh, for the coolant, actually, there, uh, for cutting fluid, it's got a drain tube that goes from the table down into the base. Uh, the base of this machine is actually the, the cavity for the oil that will hold I think just about six gallons. Um, it drains in the back of the table here there's a drain that drains through and there's two tubes that drop down into the y-axis or the, um, the x-axis um, table. Uh, the support here um, it goes into about right here and has a cavity that drains down into there. Uh, these covers here actually cover up that that slot in the table when you have it either to the extreme right or extreme left. Uh, this table here actually I've had this machine just about a hundred percent apart. The only thing that I haven't taken out of it is the rotary head bearing and that uh, the rotary head carrier there with the degree scale on it. Everything below it's been off. The All the table, the knee, um, the door is electrical, the the spindle stuff, it's all been out. Um, repaired where it needed to be, um, replaced where it needed to be. Um, most of the bearings actually in this, uh, in the power feed on this have all been replaced. Um, I did not replace the spindle bearings. They were in really great shape. They're a little more expensive bearing. Um, 
Uh, that's the first thing we started taking apart was this. It, it didn't work properly. It would only feed up. Um, and that's controlled by this piece here. It's a mechanical limit switch here. It kicks the, kicks the feed, the up and down feed into neutral. Um, and what it ended up being is it was just so, had so much uh, dried up oil and grease in it, it was just gummed up. And behind this cover here, there's some little shift bars that this piece um, gets and it will kick this in to neutral from either up or from down. Um, that solved that problem and then there was a couple gears it didn't work in and that ended up being a a key that was sheared off um, just on one gear ended up replacing that and we, we actually didn't catch that till we were putting it back together. Um, after we got that back together it worked great. Uh, the key feature of this machine, or what it's known for, is the rotary head. Uh, this is the hand feed handle here, and it will spin the spindle housing in a circle, and you can actually offset it, offset the spindle from the center line, just a, about twenty thousandths over four inches. So you can make uh, about an, you could turn an eight inch circle um, with the rotary head, which pretty handy you know I, I don't think I'll use it up, up to that size very much but for radiusing corners internal and, and external or making you know circular shapes it'll be really handy for or boring holes um, then you don't always have to have you know the right size end mill or something you know if you're boring a hole um, you can use it you want um, I guess you could use a boring head too this machine I don't have the boring head for it that this machine actually kind of has a different sort of taper it's a it is a 30 taper but it doesn't have a draw bar it uses a a nut that holds it into the spindle and the factory tooling is a little bit different um, it has somewhat of a a slot in the side of the taper that allow the drive dogs there to go into it and then there's a nut that just clamps up in into the into the spindle. Um, I I didn't get that tooling. I but actually I later I was just stumbling around on eBay and I just stumbled across a a tool kit for this machine. I got the 30 taper collets, and I think they call them a, a 20 taper collet that the tool holder uses. Um, I I still didn't get the nut that holds it in. I ended up having to make that nut. Uh, this is some of the tooling I have for the machine. This is the original style tool holder. This is actually a Kernian Checker one. Uh, this one goes up into the spindle. Um, and then it uses this style of nut here. Um, you can leave this nut on and then just slip it up through those little keys. Um, and then when it turn when it when you tighten it up, these these tangs here will tighten up against this surface here. Um, the tricky part is when making that you have to get the timing of the thread and those keys in the right spot or, or if the tool is slightly worn it will tighten up in the wrong spot and usually when it's in the wrong spot it's just right over top of the keys and then it won't tighten up and it just falls out. Um, this is the 30 taper style collet. Um, this one was an easy tool holder to make uh, or for a nut to make for it. Um, I have a whole set of those from from 16th inch all the way up to five or three quarters of an inch. Um, I made this nut here. Um, it just pinches that tool up into the up into the spindle there. Uh, those drive dogs there aren't for the Kernian Trekker style holder. I actually was able to get a hold of some Ericsson Quick Change 30. I think is what they call them. They're a 30 taper and they have a flange to tighten up and they're all the same. Um, this one I liked a little better because you can still buy them. Um, uh, this one uses, this particular tool uses DA180 collets. Um, they seem to work all right for this. Uh, that nut looks essentially the same, it's just bigger. Um, I have several of those tool holders and a two inch uh, Iskar face mill for that.
I think I'm gonna try to go in that direction for those. Um, seem to work a little better. Uh, the drive dogs, since this spindle really wasn't made for those tools, the drive dogs are a little tricky to make. As you can see, the where they bolt on the the side of the thread um, in the drive dog, or for the the screw that holds them on, is slightly daylighted, and then I had to tighten the screws up in the right stop spot and machine off the side of the head of the screw so they'd fit properly and it seems to fit good now. Um, I tried not to do too much machining without the drive dogs. Uh, I had to to make them but um, I didn't want to spin a tool inside of the inside of the taper. Uh, the vise I have on it is a Kurt V688. Uh, I bought this from MSC. They had a pretty smoking deal on uh, around Thanksgiving on their it was on their Black Friday or Cyber Monday. One of the deals they had up to 50% off, and the deal gave me about almost $150 off their list price on this vise. So that was that was a pretty intriguing factor on buying that vise over their newer style, I think it's called a DX6. I was gonna order one of those, but they uh, they weren't gonna get them for a couple months. Um, MSC had several hundred of them on order, but they weren't gonna have them till late February, early March, is what a salesperson told me. So I ended up buying this vise. Uh, seems to work really good. I've used these vices uh, multiple times on many other machines. Um, I don't have any of them, but up in the machine shop, uh, that I work in at uh, my college. We have three of these exact vices on our CNC machines and one of our Bridgeport style mills. Uh, sorry if you hear a little noise. The uh, heater's running here. It's it's a brisk five degrees below zero here today. Uh, it's supposed to get down to 20 to 25 degrees below zero, so the heater's running in the garage quite a bit today. <laughs> uh, one last little overview is all the motors on this machine are pretty low horsepower rated. Uh, this one here for the table drive is a quarter horsepower for the X and then the knee is uh, half horsepower. Uh, it's a 1100 RPM motor so it's pretty torquey and the spindle is actually just a three quarter horsepower motor um, 1725 RPM I think it is and it has a lot more power than a three quarter horsepower in my mind. It, I run a two inch face spill on this machine uh, the other day. Um, it's taken full width cut at about 25,000 steep and it, it didn't, I don't think it slowed it down whatsoever. I would kind of interested in getting a, like a RPM meter and seeing how much it slows it down. I'm sure it slows it down a little bit, but it doesn't slow it down much. So I think that three quarter horsepower motor will be plenty for this machine. I've seen some people say they switch them, but I don't see any reason to switch the motor. Um, I think that three quarter horse is plenty of power, especially since this mill is designed for end mill use under three quarters of an inch um, is what it was intended for. But I kind of want to use it as an all purpose mill. So I'll probably push its limits a little bit to see what it'll do, but I think it'll be able to handle it. Um, over here is the electrical panel. Um, very neat. Um, a lot of the machines you see, especially these older ones, somebody's dug into them to repair something or rewire something and they left just a mess compared to what they originally were. These were very well wired. They very, very neat. Um, took a lot of time and attention to the detail. Um, everything is pretty much bent at right angles. Nothing really crosses something else. Everything's got its own little route. Um, everything over here is labeled on the terminal strip and looks great. Uh, the whole entire panel is just held in with four bolts and all you have to do is unhook the terminal strip um, screws and you can take it out and that's what we did when we painted it. Um, all the red paint that you see is actually uh, it's the same kind of paint they use to spray the the insides of like these electrical motors have it's a 
It's kind of got an insulating value and a really high oil resistance. And I kind of like the color of it, so I kind of use it as an accent color on everything. Um, all the places that, you know, maybe don't show like underneath the table or inside cavities that need to be painted so you know, they don't get rusty. Or like down in here, I painted that. Uh, it turned out to be really, turned out really good. Um, the rest of the machine was painted with a HVLP gun. Uh, I can't remember the type of paint it was. Um, it's really tough. It, after it dried it, uh, for example, over here, there's a, there's a step on the side of the machine and I've stepped on it a bunch because one downside to it is the, the spindle lock. There's a little pin up inside that, uh, that you have to lock into the pulley up inside the machine. So you have to step up there to change the speeds and the, and to lock the pin to take the nut off because you have to use a spanner wrench. And I stepped up on a lot with my boots on and you can't even tell that the paint is scuffed or anything. So I think it'll hold up really well. Um, down here as well. Um, a lot of the stuff that you oil on this machine, it, it runs right out after you oil it. So, you know, you just kind of have to oil it every time you use the machine, but the oil doesn't seem to be doing anything to the paint. Um, right. I had oil on the paint about a week after it got painted and it wasn't doing anything. So I've been really happy with that. Um, this has kind of been an overview of this machine. I hope to make many more videos about it. Uh, some of my next videos should show some of the functions of the machine, actually um, doing some projects with it. Um, I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you think, uh, what you'd like to see if I missed anything. Um, thanks for watching.